Again, these abstract service definitions are intended to isolate the object models and the applications from the communication specifics. The idea here is that um, these common utility services like um, get value, set value, uh, select before operate um, are, are common across a broad range of utility applications and they can be mapped to almost any kind of protocol you want to. This will, we hope in the future, uh, this idea of future proofing that allows us to adopt new technologies without disturbing the whole thing. It, it basically builds in a migration strategy directly into the way that we've defined 61850. Part 72 of the document set, Abstract Communication Service Interface, defines the services and their parameters. It defines how to build logical devices out of logical nodes, and it defines how to organize the data objects that are derived from the logical nodes. Part 7.2 defines the abstract models for all these different pieces, um, the, a server, associations, and logical devices and nodes. Um, it also talks about these other types of abstract services like substitution and sampled values, which again are common across a wide range of applications within the utility industry. This diagram shows the organization of the ACSI models and their scope. The server is basically represents a communications uh, capability at some address which you can, down below it shows the, the types of services you do directly with a server which is uh, to be able to associate or make a connection with it, to be able to do time synchronization, and to be able to do file transfers. These, these services, these, these abstract services operate at the server level. Within a server are multiple logical devices. These may or may not be different physical devices behind the server, depending on how you organize as a gateway or whatever. Within each logical device, there is a set of logical nodes. And at the logical node level, you have a set of control capabilities, substitution, uh, settings, parameter settings, which operate on a set of data objects within the logical node. These data objects within the logical node can be organized into data sets. Um, these data sets can be arbitrary types and organization of the data but they define a group of data objects for the purposes of the reporting and logging services, Goose, the generic object-oriented substation event, and sampled values. Data objects within 61850 represent the real data, what you're really after within the device, within the logical node. Uh, examples are voltage measurements, current relay settings, um, various controls, that sort of thing. They typically aggregate attributes of different types, so they're structures, uh, structures containing a set of measurements, for instance, the Y class, you know, for each of the different phase measurements. Uh, they, t they typically have independent access control, and we have standardized naming and typing for all of them. Data sets associate a single name with a collection of data object references. The reference is in that a single data object can be in more than one data set at a time. When you access the single name, then you get the values of all the data sets. So you can do a get values and read all of the members, uh, set value and sets all the members. Data sets can be predefined, meaning they're static and, and defined at boot time in the device. Or they can be dynamic, where a client can create a data set, uh, either temporary or permanent data set, within a server to set up a different collection. Data sets can also be interrogated, meaning you can get the, you can, there's services available to read, to, to get the members of the data set, not the values, but the members to know what the data set members are. The control model in 61850 applies to specific object classes. So there's a controllable single point class and double point class. There's control step position, analog set points. The controls can be either immediate or time activated. Time activated controls include a, a time parameter that specifies when the control operation should take place sometime in the future. 
There's several different possible mechanisms within the control model. Uh, the simplest one is direct control with normal security. With this type of control, the client sends a simple request and the server sends a, an op operate response once the action is performed with either success or failure on the response. SBO control with normal security. Uh, SBO stands for select before operate and it's a two-step control where the client first makes a selection request and then makes an operate request. Um, each of those are separately responded to by the server and uh, at the point that the operator re operate request is made the action at the server is initiated and the response merely says that the action has been started. It doesn't really give you a close on it. Um, the final, typically within our models, the final action, when the, when the action is completed, uh, the client should be looking for the status point that actually is monitoring that control to see whether it's completed. The select before operate control with enhanced security um, closes that feedback loop. Essentially, it's a two-step, again, selection and response, then an operate request and a response that says the action has been initiated, and then after that, there's a command termination that is returned from the server to the client that says the action's completed. The sort of mental model of this is contact closure, that the operate request begins the contacts moving, but the command termination says when they've completed and they're stable again.